Hi, everybody. All right, this is a Light Creates Matter documentary, and this is a little bit different than the Flat Earth I've been doing, but I think that this needs to be uh, put out because of a major advancement in technology and several keynotes on this technology that is just coming out that will make this a revolution in our human experience, especially when it becomes reality as it will in the future. Um, this is a Light Creates Matter documentary. It's very important. Scientists have discovered a way they claim to create matter from light. That's actually not what they're doing. All they're doing is using light's frequency and how it naturally creates matter far off in a star and other sources to repeat that process in a laboratory. These guys are not creating basketballs, folks. They are not creating Hot Pockets for us. These guys are doing one and two cell particles and probably a molecule at this point. These guys are not actually creating matter that will do any major good. I, of course, they're on the breakthrough, and that's fine, but guys at Skunk Works and Lockheed Martin and various others have not only gone to that technology, but they are thousands of years past it. Um, but I want to really talk to you guys about this because this discovery actually ties in with a lot of different things I've been seeing, and I wanted to bring this to you because I want to talk to you about what this actually means for your family's safety and for the reality that is coming together off of this technology. Whether we see it develop in 10 years, 25 years, 100, 1,000, it doesn't matter. The reality from this shift alone is going to be monumental. Uh, this technology has been used in many, many, many ways, but it is in its infancy right now, so it is virtually harmless. Uh, one of the ways I want to talk to you about this and one of the things I want to talk to you about is from this technology we will get lightsabers, we will get um, animated creatures that will be able to hold physical form, we will be able to have police and military that are fully light beings or recorded images thereof like holograms. I'll get into that in a minute, or in a few minutes rather, and they will be able to manipulate matter, so instead of having 20 humans do it or 20 robots, we will project something from a drone, a satellite, uh, a computer system in a warehouse, and these beings will be created that will be able to move boxes, uh, make arrests, various simple tasks that have been recorded on various uh, platforms. Um, there was an incident where this type of technology might even become more advanced than that. Um, Amnesty International had a group of protesters using holograms which were marching. And it wasn't just one or two scenes flickering and then there was a repeat. This looked like a crowd of protesters, probably about, I'd say, better part of five or ten units of people protesting. And however this was done, the cameras were almost not near the site where the protester or the uh, holographic protesters were. And the recordings were so good, folks, that you could watch it for almost an hour straight and it didn't even flicker to where the, the image you were watching looped. So, this technology, folks, in the coming years is going to be revolutionary. This could be the technology, ladies and gentlemen, that replaces robots altogether. This could be the technology that replaces police and military around the world. They just fly a drone over, project an army, have them storm a compound, take people, do something with them. Uh, this is also a technology that would bring us light 
wave uh, tractor beams and various technologies of that sort, um, light shields like you saw in Star Wars and Star Trek, various forms of that matter. Um, and yes, when I say light, I'm saying light, but I'm also meaning matter and energy. Or rather, you know, light as an energy creates matter. Okay, so I have a couple of good sources, Science Daily, The Guardian, Extreme Tech, Daily Beast, Stanford.edu. I have lots of lots and lots of good information on the future of this technology, folks. And I see it as a monumentous and monumental leap forward in what we will be able to do. This could be the technology, ladies and gentlemen, that breaches the teleportation and the time travel. I know I said that there were others and there are but if you can create light from matter you can also copy that matter back into light and therefore you can transport between one area and another and create that same physical image repeatedly or transfer the image that you boxed in let's say and move it at the speed of light or beyond to a distant star or a distant area so this could be the technology breakthrough that will send us beyond Star Trek. It could very well be that. And lots of people are nervous about this one. Um, there was an update on this, and I forget where it was, but it basically said that they were now able to use this technology and freeze particles, which I think is actually an old technology Maybe they were freezing them longer, or they were moving them different ways. I forget what the situation is. That's why I didn't source it. But I wanted to bring this to you because this is a monumental discovery. And it's worthy of America 2.0 documentaries. I know you guys are all into the flat earth thing. And I have two or three good ideas coming for that. But I wanted to put this out there because this is the almost... God particle level documentary and documentary science and various science uh, says related to that. I mean, can you imagine fighting a war on Europa or some alien colony and us projecting an army from a space satellite that go in and exterminate an entire indigenous population of beings? This technology could be that, could do that. And with the Amnesty International protesters, if they had been fully in physical form, they could have manipulated matter in the area, throwing chairs and doing various things. Now, there's various uh, parts of this which may or may not come true. The first part, which would be the holographic technology, where it's controlled at some point where somebody is off in a studio performing deeds in a light being form and there is an AI tech to it to where creatures are created uh, where this technology is used we saw that in a very big sci-fi movie I believe in the 50s and 60s with Dr. Morbius protecting his daughter using the Krell uh, technology with Forbidden Planet and this is just another step forward into that discovery, folks. I mean, the absolute technology that you can break f from this would not only make your starships go light speed, but it would make your starships out of light. It would make you be able to hold suns inside beakers and in glass jars by shrinking them because you could compress the matter and save it. It would do so much. It is ridiculous. And the very thought that we are on the threshold of a new industry where we can literally take our world and manipulate it with our very hands, even through technology, makes us near gods.
like I said, these guys that are doing this in the research labs aren't there quite yet. They're basically discovering the path that science takes and that God has taken from the ether or from the dimension that holds all the energy and shows how to create matter that way and they're repeating those steps in a lab and they're getting the same results again and again and again and again and again. They cannot yet, at least not through these, these scientists and these discoveries and these scientific labs, create things out of matter. They cannot shine a, several lights into an area and make a hot pocket, make a glass of milk, you know, make the Star Trek technology. They cannot do that yet. But it, it, that would be like a fifth dimensional printer. They cannot yet do that yet. Um, I guarantee you the guys at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works uh, have already done that, and they're past that technology. I remember the speech from the president of Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. He said, when the F-117 came out, wow, if that's the technology we just released, where are we now? And he says, you know Star Trek, you know Star Wars? We're so far beyond that. We know whether or not the technology is worth doing, whether it's costly, whether or not we can uh, mass produce it, or whether it's just not worth it altogether. And they actually said that they were beyond that, folks. So as I was saying, there's a lot of good stuff uh, involving this. Um, one of the sources through Science Daily is out of the University of Rochester. Now it does say it started in 1997, but you guys get the idea that this is this is mostly new. A team of 20 scientists and four institutions literally made something from nothing, creating particles of matter from ordinary light for the first time. The experiment was carried out in Stanford Linear Accelerator Center SLAC by scientists and students from the University of Rochester, Princeton University, and Chess University. I'm sorry. University of Rochester, Princeton University, the University of Tennessee, and Stanford. So this goes back a little while. Converting energy into matter isn't completely new to physicists. When they smash together particles like photons and anti -phot or protons and antiprotons in high energy accelerator experiments, the initial particles are destroyed and release fleeting bursts of energy. Sometimes this energy burst contains very short-lived packet of, of light known as virtual pho photons, which go on to form new partic particles. In the experiment, scientists observed for the first time the creation of particles from real photons. So, ladies and gentlemen, as early as the 1990s, this has actually been going on. What they basically did was they smashed protons and antiprotons and high energy accelerators, and the initial particles are destroyed and release a fleeting burst of energy, and they give off very short lived packets known as virtual photons, which go on to create particles from real photons and the packets of light that scientists can observe directly in the laboratory. Now this is from 1997. Go on, go on to the Guardian. So matter created from light within a year claims scientists. Well they already said that they can create it over there in 1997 so this one's a little bit outdated, but we're going to go with it because this is actually pretty cool. That means they can actually start building with it is what that means. Researchers have worked out a way for the first time to make matter from pure light and are drawing up plans to demonstrate the feat in the next 12 months. The theory underpinned the idea the first described 80 years ago in by two scientists who later worked on the first atomic bomb. 
but in a report published on Saturday, physicists at Imperial College of London claim to have cracked the problem using high-powered lasers and other equipment now available to scientists. So remember, they said they first did this in a small experiment to view it in 1997. Now they're able to recreate it time and time again using lasers and the other equipment that scientists find readily available now. We have shown in principle how you can make matter from light. Stefan Rose, if you do this experiment, you will be taking light and turning it into matter. Original idea by two U.S. scientists, Gregory Bright and John Wheeler in 1934. And it goes along with the Bright-Wheeler process, simplest way matter can be made from light. And one of the purest demonstrations of E equals MC2, or squared. All right, they go on to describe how they've done it before. But the process is one of the most spectacular predictions of a theory called quantum electrodynamics, QED, that was developed in run-up of the Second World War. You might call it the most dramatic consequence of QED, and it clearly shows that light and matter are interchangeable. So now they're basically using Omega lasers in Rochester, New York, and another in Orion laser in Elder. Mayston, uh, the atomic weapons facility in Berkshire. So these guys are actually doing it. This is no longer theory. These guys are actually doing the building block processes, folks. Let's see, can I get rid of this? All right, guys, bear with me on this one because of this unfortunate ad that I cannot get rid of. Physicists in England claim they've discovered how to create matter from light, smashing together individual massive photons, a feat which theorized back to 1934. Don't worry, I'm not going to repeat all this. I'm just going to kind of get through it. And thank God the actual thing is actually gone, uh, that being the, uh, the ad. Way back in 1930, British theorists Paul Dirac theorized that an electron and its antimatter counterpart, a positron, could be annihilated, combined to produce two photons. And in 1934, two physicists, Bright and Wheeler, we've already talked about this, did it, creating a Bright-Wheeler pair, uh, and vice versa, or to phase it out, another way of E equals MC squared, works in both directions. We've already went over this in the other one, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, this would close one of the last gaps in particle physics that's been theorized, but has been, but has proven very hard uh, to prove through observation. This is basically a Compton scattering, a photoelectric effect, which Einstein said basically through Hertz. So this one was by Thompson, by Hertz, by Rodegag. Uh, this is their direct annihilation from 1934 from Kempler to 2014. Bright Wheeler pair production produced 1933 and a single photon annihilation. Uh, Berth Heather, uh, Heathler pair production 1932 by Anderson. And this is basically the space time effect. The photon path, the electron versus the positron, the nucleus, the theory of the experiment, and the Nobel laureate. So here you see a bunch of people who have been doing this since 1887. And as early as 1897, who have actually done this. This is the theory here. There's a docket here, or a document, a PDF file. You can go into that. I'll place these among the uh, various sources. Basically there's an electron beam, a gold target, gamma rays and photons. There's the E minus and the E plus. A radiation field with uh, by Hothram and an E plus and an E minus that go out that way. 
I'm not going to go into that because that's not why we're here. We're not here to uh, to do that. Uh, the daily. Here we go. We can create matter from or light from matter, or rather <laughs> matter from light. I apologize, folks. Uh, this one was talking about a published paper. This week illuminated, pun intended, the relationship between light and matter. Most exciting is that they could create matter from light. This one's going to basically say the whole thing over and over and over. So we're going to go into basically what it was. It was published by Natural Photonics. And it basically goes into the same thing again and again and again. And this one basically doesn't have a lot to it. Um, this one here basically just backs up. This one's actually from September of 1997 when this started. So as you can see, it's by the New York Times Company from a 19 or September 16, 1997 source. So as you do notice, this technology is very very old and its infancy started in the 1880s so now they can do it with lasers and things where now they can where before in the 1990s they could show the photons creating the matter and creating the particles now they can use those photons and those matter or in, and those particles to start you know producing matter and producing various things associated with that matter so I had to give you the education update to show you this stuff is actually going on and that this wasn't a bunch of hooey. Now I'm going to take you to the fun trip. I'm going to take you guys and show you what this can do in the near future from the point at which we actually are to the point where, you know, drones are basically energy field beings that are kicking in the door dragging you out with a warrant. Or, you know, a cartoon character living next door. Or an energy shield protecting your city from a nuclear attack. Um, a projected protest on Mars, let's say. Or an army of light beings invading, I don't know, a colony on Saturn or something. Any number of things, lightsabers included. The concepts basically go on and on and on and on and on. Anything you can basically think of where light and matter, energy and matter, and light are able to be combined. Alright, so here are the other videos I have. One from 2008, uh, CNN, uh, presidential election, where they use a hologram for the first time on TV, where they actually quote-unquote beam people in to speak. Uh, I have tractor beam technology unfortunately that's using sonics and not light but we'll show it anyways test tube shows the south korean uh, holographic protest and then i have another treat for you guys and this is just to show that what light can do as it is right now and imagine if you will if this technology was used in these situations where we could actually create on the ground physicality using holograms and we are probably I would say 10-15 years from being able to do that whether it be soldiers, police, shields, lightsabers I guarantee you this stuff is already being done um, and has been done at Skunk Works and various other places no doubt but this is what I have to show you. So, without further ado, this is from a 2008 CNN hologram. CNN hologram for the first time on TV. By uh, Will I Am, uh, who is live in Grand Park. Let's see if we can uh, beam him in now. And notice there's there actually a blue beam around Will, him thanks like very much in Star for being Wars. With us. Uh, how is this night for you? Oh, this is great. You know, we're at the eve of uh, a brand new day in America. And remember, he can't and see him like, good being like, like he's Chicago. in the studio, I don't believe. Uh, all this Unless technology he's looking at his screen. I'm being beamed to you like it's Star Wars and stuff. 
Yeah, it, it looks like great. basically like exactly like in uh, in Star Trek when they would beam people down. That's what it looks like right here. Well, yeah, he but, meant yeah. Star Wars, not Star Trek. Is, Star a, Trek would be teleportation here. technology. Um, Chicago, this is just how it's a beautiful time in Los Angeles. My mom texts me, Notice telling me Star how proud Wars, that they she is of me. Blue and, uh, light bright. You know, lending my career to inspire people to go out and vote and be in the voice for young people. We're, we're you know, doing I'm, I'm just real. So isn't that something, folks? Holograms using the 28 elections on CNN. Now, here's something really cool. Back that up, eight years. Oddly enough, that's not science fiction, folks. That's technology right there. Protesters in South Korea. These are actually holograms by Amne Amnesty International. Used them to protest Korean Park Gwen Hai on the eve of her year, third year in office. I'm gonna let you guys read this part. So going back, I know on that part you saw, I believe it was a piece of, like, plexiglass or something like that that was actually portraying these, um, these protesters, but it is still on paper that we can project holograms onto physical surroundings via the 28 elections on CNN that you saw in the first video. So this is still technology that we can still do on the ground from up on top or below and you know project a three-dimensional source. So this technology is actually quite advanced. Now, I wanted to show you the tractor beam technology. British scientists build sound wave tractor beam. Because sooner or later, this will be light technology doing this. A team of researchers this. in the UK has successfully created a real-life tractor beam that can levitate objects without contact. The device was made from 64 mini loudspeakers that can produce precisely timed sound waves, accurate to the microsecond level. By and we'll be able to have that in light waves soon. The acoustic force could be used to levitate bigger and heavier objects. Scientists experimented with three acoustic force fields. The first one is a tweezer-like beam that can grip, move, and rotate an object. The second one behaves like an acoustic vortex, which can suspend an object in its quiet central core. The third acoustic field works like a cage, trapping the object inside. Scientists were... And... The way that helps is using sound, they've learned how to build the dimensions in the computer systems, which could actually push up or move around an object using the sound. And no doubt there are systems which can actually do that using light now. So this is actually really, really awesome. We are living in a time when projected images are going to be able to lift objects, folks. I guarantee it. I guarantee the first the first part of this to be in 10 years, where warehouses might actually be able to project from, I don't know, a 20-foot ceiling or something, an image of a man moving a physical object, and he'll be able to pick up a box and push it into a storage area and using AI technology they will be able to project that person in one area and be able to make them walk or even levitate the object into its appropriate spot thusly getting rid of a huge sector of robots 
and various other technologies. I know you're going to say it's 20 years out, it's 25 years out, but I'm telling you it's 10 to 15 years out, folks. And you saw the hologram technology in 2008 where there was a 3D rendering of a person. I remember that being eight different cameras that projected that, but in 10, 12, 20 years' time, we'll be able to project quote-unquote physical energy beings, folks. It might just be people in a sound studio or in a, you know, in a radio studio, but they'll be able to do what surgeons are doing now with robot technology, and they'll be able to move boxes from a projected self-image of light. That is what I'm trying to bring here and bring to the table, folks. And this next one basically goes in when we actually get the technology perfected, where those AI systems can go off and live on their own, like iRobot, when the robots were disbanded, they went off and they formed their own community. Well, what happens when the light creatures are no longer needed for one reason or another, and they run off and they form their own community? And we have, you know, energy beings or light beings that are, say, animated characters for, you know, Mars, uh, the candy company, or... You know, any number of the animated series will jump on the bandwagon to create a living, breathing, quote-unquote breathing, being that is of their animated franchise. That could be, you know, as human as you and I after a learning algorithm is implanted in them. I don't know how they would do it, but that brings me into an idea of Toontown from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Granted, this is uh, unfortunately a full animated story or situation, but you would have just the beings or just the trees and a normal sky or something similar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is amazing. That we have come to that point where that becomes such a reality where everything we know of could possibly change. Where robots that have taken over human beings' jobs are now practically on the verge, nearly at a point where they are no longer necessary. Now we'll be able to project light from a camera or several cameras and be able to move a physical object. That's going to be the first technology and that's going to take over like in warehouses and various places like that. And that's going to take the spot of exosuits being necessary for people to move a thousand pound uh, objects. Uh, my father and I today had to move a car, just us. Um, it was a project car that he was working on. He said, hey, could you help me? I said, fine. Uh, luckily, we only had to move it about 10-15 feet. It was a non-running vehicle, in case you couldn't get the idea from what I was talking. And we had to move it and I'm about 5'7", 150 pounds. He's about 5'11". Uh, I'd say better part of 170. I put out about probably 220 pounds of force. Him, I would say 250 to 300 pounds uh, or more, depending on the individual situation and everything else. Um... And even though I bench more than that, my body can only substantiate so much inertial force from my 150. And it's usually like 60% higher, so the 220 range is probably a good guesstimate. And his is about 300 from his 180, so that's actually a good guesstimate. And what really made it hard for us, ladies and gentlemen, was that in Michigan, yes, I'm from Michigan, it had just rained. It actually snowed. And 
there was a hole with ice and we couldn't get traction so we had to shovel that up and we were able to use a jack with wheels and we were able to hoist the car up on one side push and the car slid a little bit we moved it to the other side hoisted it up moved it a little more and did that repeated that process along with moving the steering wheel and everything else forward and back several times and within about less than 10 minutes once we figured out exactly what we were doing we were able to actually physically move this vehicle that is no doubt over 2,000 3,000 pounds even though the engine was taken at, um, was actually moved to the back seat and various other things the car was still fully equipped as far as you know having all its parts best of my knowledge so it wasn't like it was lighter but this technology to move to create matter from light could have helped us a lot by simply creating matter underneath the vehicle lifting up the car and moving it that would have been a technology another technology would have been to create matter on the side of the vehicle and push it. Now I know that this technology doesn't say that it has a lot of physical properties where it can, you know, do super things yet, but it will in the future when we can start making particles that make materials. And once we can make super materials appear out of light, folks, we can then hold that and use it to push and that will become an age where like I said we will have lightsabers and ships that can go to all the planets that uh, in the solar system and beyond that either can project a shield of light or become an energy source thereof and go faster than the speed of light or take something that is matter and create it as a light source and move that to a distant area because if once you do one thing you know how to do it back and like I said folks you know you guys can always decide and I haven't said that yet and I apologize but you know once you have the technology in one direction you can easily move it backwards from matter to light and that ladies and gentlemen is teleportation and at that point you can project that image or that stillness into another area also with that you can make various copies of it and you should have the exact same thing over and over and over and I was going to put up a picture of um, the female rabbit in Roger and who framed Roger rabbit to show you you know that women and men are going to go after the these sex robots and then all of a sudden you know here come all their sexy little characters that they've wanted all their life well here they are in physical form uh, you know via their internet camera you know that's what it's gonna end up being you know as a physical being and that's gonna go above and beyond I know I'm talking about something that would probably be a thousand years in the future folks but I guarantee you this is probably within 10 to 15 years and this is going to be absolutely amazing when this technology finally comes out I mean you are going to see such an advancement in the way that we structure our lives as humans the way that technology brings us closer to Prometheus or Godhood or becoming gods um, the way that the protesters today you know can show up in the form of light and move around in a recorded fashion in less than a hundred years we'll be able to create uh, beings that can be projected and can move physical objects and be controlled from let's say a studio on top of the warehouse like a projector and be able to move inventory into their slots without the use of robots and like I said the 
the mechanisms and the equations and all the algorithms to do that are being developed now. So it will not be a huge jump from our current reality because as we take steps forward, we are actualizing this, folks. So you might just see one day that, you know, that from, I don't know, Project Bluebeam or all these others that we've been seeing where, you know, the cross will show up in the sky or there's a horrible sound or there's an alien ship invading or something and it'll be just projected light from some other source that we can't see that is actually doing this. Whether it's all real or all fake, I don't know. But we will know that it is from this type of technology. And like I said, this type of technology has been invented since about the 1880s, and it's been building momentum ever since. In the 1930s, they made a breakthrough, and in the 1990s, they made a breakthrough. And now they're taking those breakthroughs, and they say, okay, well, we know how to make the experiment work. Well, now we can make the experiment work and do things to the process to make it work more efficiently to produce certain protons, certain particles. Uh, now they're making it to where they can freeze the particles, where they can create uh, materials from those particles. So it's only a matter of time, folks, that the light creates matter, which we know, and that technology moves us completely into the realm where we are able to do this. So this is Light Creates Matter documentary, folks. And as always, you decide. But this will be the technology, folks, where you'll see police and military either being projected or have AI systems attached to them, creating light beings that will be able to perform actions in physical reality. We'll see animated characters being owned and operated by companies, um, along with the genetic characters, which no doubt is coming. I'm certain all the major characters are being grown via labs in certain farms, as I know they are, uh, as animal hybrids or human-animal hybrids, among other things. The day and age where you can walk among your neighbors and see, you know, Mickey Mouse in animated form is coming. The idea that your techno your lightsabers and your various hologram technologies is coming where you'll be able to see these things move and operate in physical reality is coming. Um, this is Light Creates Matter documentary, folks, and always you decide. Thank you.